I'm 14, I would probably spend at least five hours a night on the computer. I love Facebook, chatting, I take pictures and post them to friends. It's pretty fun. I've got like 500 friends. I play Minecraft, World of Warcraft, I used to play RuneScape. You can spend hours doing stuff in games. I spend most of my weekend playing, sometimes after school when I'm allowed. We're looking to hire employees that understand the digital world. We deal a lot with marketing and communication, and we're looking to bring in skills that can enhance our performance on the global stage. One of my biggest struggles in the classroom is keeping my students focused on what's happening in class and not on their mobile phone or laptop. I needed to do an assignment, but I couldn't find the right information. The teachers gave us some handouts, but I left them in my locker. I'll probably get a detention for not being organised. I'm part of a global network which looks at energy efficiency. I'm the only member from Australia, so all our meetings are online. I have to be up at 2am sometimes to be part of a web meeting that's based in the United States. A teacher caught me on Skype in class. I lost my laptop for the day. It was pretty annoying because all my work was on there. Then I had to start writing it out from the beginning. You have to be looking at what is on their screens all the time. I have a lot of trouble trusting students with computers. You just don't know what they could be doing. Manufacturing has become increasingly digital over the last decade. Jobs that used to require up to 12 workers can now be automated using machinery. What we're really looking for now is workers who have the digital skills to enhance our products at a conceptual level. With the advent of technology, digital devices are having an increasing effect on the way we communicate, the way we manage ourselves, the way we are entertained, the way we produce, the way we learn, and now our teaching pedagogies. The digital age has accelerated the flow of information. With the invention and enhancement of new technologies, we've also seen a rise in the methods by which information can be accessed. This year, we've integrated laptops into our school. Every student from year nine and above as a personal computer device. I have students email me work. It makes it easier for me to look over their drafts and send back feedback without having to chase them. My emails back up to the digital server so I can access them in my office, at home or in the classroom. Internet access is the only thing I really need. I can start an assignment at school and leave all of my research and applications open on the screen. When I get home, it's all there waiting for me. Organisation has really improved. There are so many tools that students can access. Students can find answers quick enough most of the time, but they don't retain the information as well. It's been hard to adjust the way I've always taught certain things. I still think writing down and repeating processes is the most important way to learn. We did an assignment on Hinduism this term. The teacher gave us the information on a paper handout. He didn't want us looking at Wikipedia. We're seeing more copying and pasting in our students' work. More reliance on the same resources. They're taking the fastest route to information without really considering some of the great options out there. One of the greatest struggles for teachers is adapting content and subject matter to suit the application of technology. There are a range of tools available, but deciding which are most appropriate to enhance teaching and learning and which distract from content can be a fine line. We looked at a website today that let you string together all these facts about history make your own movie. My friends put everything in the water. It's pretty funny. Sometimes I find a website or resource that looks fun and engaging. I like to give my students time to play with it, even if they don't really learn anything. I think the skills are still there. We've been learning about the Great Depression, so our teacher sent us to this website that had pictures and videos of Shirley during the time. There were all these kids running around barefoot in the streets. It looked pretty awful. Part of effective ICT use is having the confidence and competence to implement new technologies into the classroom. I receive weekly information about new resources and software and I usually spend my Monday afternoon testing a few. Sometimes I see something that I think would be useful but I reckon I delete more than about half of them. I tend to push technologies onto students that I use myself that way I can model it and often the students end up using more features and giving me tips. It's cool when you get to use something that other people are aware of. I use the same mobile organiser as my teacher. It's really good. I can see why she likes it. 
teacher is always showing us new things on the internet. We've signed up to this site to let you save your bookmarks online. Students need to see effective ICT use in action in order to understand the difference between efficiency and distraction. The teacher plays a vital role in modelling this behaviour. I have to make sure my phone is off or on silent if I bring it into class. I find that students will be more distracted by their devices if I have mine in class. So my students often ask me for a good website or app to help them with an assignment and I'm not really good on computers so I usually just say to Google it. If you don't know how to find information, it can be really hard to get your work done. I've spent ages on websites that have turned out to be totally wrong. I used some information once that my teacher said wasn't true. We all use this program in class that lets you see different examples of words in use. The teacher uses it sometimes with the class. It's really handy when you're not sure what a word means. Different tools produce different skills, and this is a distinction that both teachers and students need to make if they are to successfully integrate ICT into their culture. It's about matching the outcome of what you want your students to learn, produce or organise with the technology that you choose. If I want my students to learn a piece of information, I'll use one type of tool. If I want them to present what they know in a creative way, I'll use another. I don't think there is one form of technology which covers all the skills that students need to learn. It's really good when you can use a website or program for one assignment, but then you can use it again for something different, even a different subject. Another vital element of fulfilling the role of ICT in schools is incorporating up-to-date resources which relate to student interests. The teacher set up a chat room for our class which we can use in lessons or for homework. I like typing my comments better than speaking in class. It means I can look at what I've written and edit it. Students enjoy communicating using technology and it's funny that we don't utilise this more. I've been trying some digital discussions with my students and it's interesting to see the change in dynamic. I think the key is making it safe, but still providing some freedom. I have my students upload PowerPoint presentations online and have their peers post comments on their work. It's a great way to get students involved in the class community and it's accessible to those who wouldn't normally speak in the classroom. Being able to post comments to other students and teachers when I'm doing homework makes it feel like I'm still in the class. It's really handy when I get stuck. Sometimes I just post unfinished and it's really cool to see teachers or other students commenting or hitting like. It is clear that the role of ICT in education is still in the process of finding its feet. But we can see that the benefits it has on the value of teaching and learning can be exceptional if utilised correctly. The key to progress is a willingness to embrace the digital age and take the time to invest in the enhancement of learning. While the process may be filled with trials and conflicts, bridging the gap between the interests of our students and their future needs to be the focus of schools.